Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome back to Empire at War Forces of Corruption. Oh, we've got that strange error. But welcome back. Uh, we're continuing our campaign playing through. Go to widescreen here. If you just reapply that, it will fix that strange stretched effect. If you've ever had that in your game, just go into, uh, was it video? Go into widescreen, off, on, accept and you'll be good to go. But welcome back to Fall of the Republic, the Clone Wars Total Conversion mod that I highly recommend. You can find it over on Steam. Of course, there's a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. Um, we are continuing our campaign and kind of wrapping it up. We've got the big fleets on the move. We're heading towards the last of the Separatist outpost. Molinus in the background, Dantooine. Um, I don't know if they're gonna have a massive force back there or not. I know, like, Dantooine in the lore? No, probably not. Mullinus, yeah, maybe. We'll, we'll see when we get there. So we're going to keep the fleet moving. We're going to keep blockading and see if we can push through. Special announcement. If you're watching this on the day that it came out, this video. Uh, hey, Shaq T, let me move you out. Uh, I am streaming all day live. We're going to be playing Squadrons. Uh, I got the Hotas set up and all the key bindings. So if you want to pop on over for a, for a good time and check out the game, ask some well, questions, feel free to join us me. over on Twitch slash Captain Shaq. Our crew accounted for as we are continuing to produce war vessels in the core worlds. Let's turn on all things. Get all the intel. Uh, I mean, man, our economy is so just exploded right now. We've got 319,000 credits. We couldn't spend it all if we wanted to at this point. So we're kind of just pressing through and seeing if we can find a good fight. This campaign is pretty much over. And I think the next one is going to be, and we've talked about it a bit, is going to be the Empire. I've played a little bit of Squadrons so far. I played through the first few missions. I'm enjoying it. I'm definitely enjoying it. I put a Venator. I thought I put a Venator in the fleet lead. I thought I put a, just a Dreadnought. Huh. All right, move forward. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's got a weird start. Like the very first mission, no real spoilers here. The first briefing, they're like, hey, uh, we need to go hunt down the last of the survivors of Alderaan because we're jerks. It is literally the mission. Go find a bunch of refugees from a planet that was destroyed. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Let's run this gauntlet. We're going to just press on. As soon as this is destroyed, we might be able to hyperspace in a little bit closer. Don't let them escape. Ready to update orders. Yes. Uh, no, actually, I can't get any closer, no, and they're definitely going to get away. Yeah, they're going to get away. So, ah, Geonosian starfighters are weird. It's actually a sizable fleet. If they keep falling back, they may have a, a decent fleet as we push through a Molinist. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. I don't know. I'm starting, now that I've played a bit of squadrons, though, the first mission, TIE Fighter. I was like, hmm, who plays the Empire? It's going to be good. Yeah, though it's a little bizarre. It's a little bizarre. It feels weirdly... X voice. It feels weirdly slow from the bit that I've played so far. Like the combat feels slow. I'm in the Tie Fighter. Like this is a this thing is known in the lore for being suicidally fast with no defenses. And I'm flying through the first mission, and maybe it's because of the scale of the asteroid station I'm flying around. Maybe it's just so big that it makes me feel slow. When in reality, I'm just you know passing by all these large you know mechanical struts and. And, and asteroid mining facilities that are, it's such a large scale that it just makes, it gives that sense. But I don't know, it felt bizarre. Maybe it's because I came back from um, X-Wing Alliance. I've been playing a lot of that and fairly hard game, but I feel like, you know, you're moving, when you throw power to engines, you feel like you're just a bat out of hell, blazing across space. Squadrons, it felt like they didn't trust the players with that kind of speed or something. I've been a TIE fighter. I should feel like I'm going crazy fast. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and drop out. We're gonna be super aggressive. Um, they do have a bulwark. It is, what kind of bulwark is it? It's a Mark One. so yeah. Let's get Yularen in there. We'll put him in the back for support. Let's get a couple of front-lying Venators since we have the Venators for it. Oh man, look at that fleet. Nice, 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 nice. I had a chance to watch a video on like the design philosophy of Awakening of the Rebellion's new fighter combat. And if you've never played that mod, it's a Galactic Civil War era one. And that's the one we're talking about playing as the Empire. Let's move these bombers in. And one of the cool things is they're talking about how 
the ground combat rework that they did, which is actually quite good, is influencing how they're doing space combat. And so they started out the balancing with what they count as, like, this is Star Wars, X-Wing, TIE Fighter. If we don't get this portion right, these two squadrons fighting each other doesn't feel right, then we're doing it wrong, and, and we've got to scrap the whole thing. So... So that's what they were doing, and you'd see like the concussions firing off, you could see the maneuverability of the TIE Fighters, which were kind of outmaneuvering the X-Wings a bit, but the X-Wings had the firepower, so they'd open up with concussion missiles, and yeah, it looks really good. I see a couple of Gazantis in there. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and move up. Let's go ahead and move up. I got a little bit of a laugh. First mission. You're sitting there in uh, in your TIE fighter, right? You're flying through, this is squadrons, and you're flying through the fleet. And I'm sitting there and I'm locking onto every ship I can see and looking at the names. And every single ship class has its proper name, right? So you got the Nebulon B, and you've got the Mon Cal, except the Arquintans. It's just labeled light cruiser. And the only thing I can think of is that the community doesn't agree on how to say the name and they didn't want and they, they never they have not mentioned it yet the name of it they've said the names of all kinds of other cruisers and other vehicles but not that one that'll still hold our quinton sounds far cooler than uh what's the one how do they say it um architons i think is how people normally say it architons i don't know i've seen the comments for years doesn't bother me Especially when I say the the names of planets wrong. Especially planets that have never been like said out loud in like an audiobook or anything, but it doesn't bother me. All right, so the fleet has moved in. We've, we're ready to go with Yoda, and I believe, Yoda, you're not by yourself, right? You've got, uh, oh no, you're with like everybody. Yeah, you've got Tarkin, you've got all kinds of ground troops. Though, oh, oh ground troops, excuse me, uh, space forces, but you do not have ground troops. You need to join up with another... Ah, uh, who, how do we want to do this? I could bring Shaq T over to Orinda so that they can't hit us farther south. And then I could move, I could move these, this unit. How much what do they have? They have a lot of armor, but no infantry. Yeah, let's combine you with Yoda. So, um, Sakura, you're going to join up with Yoda and his ground forces. Let's do it. So get you guys into orbit. I'm just gonna... Oh, they're moving out. Oh, I need to turn on Cruel AI again. So we keep turning on Cruel AI. Um, I don't, uh, we've, we've probably pushed them to the point where it's not going to make a huge difference. They're just able to produce faster. Uh, AI cheats. It's it's what's going on. They're cheating. Uh, Dothamir is under attack. We actually have a we actually have a space force there. Dothamir. Ah. Uh, my players. So we've taken a break for the Star Wars campaign. I've been running one for two years in tabletop, Star Wars tabletop, uh, with my with my my main batch of players, right? So it's Tex Fire and my girlfriend Tabby, and uh, our our one of our moderators Blitz, and it's been a. Oh, is this all we've got? Oh, did wait what? It's all ground forces. Hard cell transports, yeah, and then one single. Weird, and we've got a dreadnought. Um, I would like to take out the the <laughs> those transports if I can. They're probably gonna run, I'd imagine. Incoming fighters, N Nanex fighters, whatever those are. Those are the Geonosian ones, I believe. You were never gonna hit one of those guys. Oh no, he smacked one. Nice. Hey, you got some laser cannons on you. Get work done. He just popped another one. He just popped another one. Uh, their maneuverability must be crap. Or I am underestimating the point defense capability of a Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser. The Anat is the name of this cruiser. Sure. We've been taking a break, but right now my players are leaving kind of the designated area. So I I, I gave them a map of the Namadi Corridor, which is a real place in Star Wars. Um, it's actually where Doran is. It's where it's, so this is where the Keldor from. Uh, it's where the it's where Gleand Selm is. So it's where the Nautilans are from. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff. The Zabriks are uh, an offshoot in that region. So it's a really cool place to stage your campaign uh, with a lot of fun stuff. And there's even some natural choke points in the region that make for um, interesting storytelling, like 
uh, Bill Bringy being a major military base for the Empire, um, then and and the Keldor homeworld is Doran is so close to it that it makes this beautiful little choke point where it has two black holes, which is what that system is known for. So they're they're leaving that region for the first time. They're heading towards orders, the homeworld of the Black Sun, um, but right now they're stuck at what I call Station 88. It's this region of space. It used to be an old Republic battle station. It used to be one of their front lines, logistical station. Well, it's gone into disrepair over the years um, as the Republic didn't keep it up. It's been taken over by a various criminal organization. It's cool, we got a few of them. So we got a few transports. It's been taken over by a collection of criminal organizations, pirates and slavers and smugglers and just all these, these uh, disparate groups. And that's where they're at right now because they're trying to negotiate for repairs because they took heavy damage. And it's... Ah, they, they made a deal. They said, hey, they can't afford their repairs. So they'll take care of this problem on the lower deck. The, the bottom three, like, floors of this station. Um, for for the person who runs this democratically elected... Damn! Oh, no, our fleet's on the move. Okay. That's fine. No, our blockade is being attacked by a very small... I'm just going to auto off. Yep. When it's that far in my favor, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Uh, do we have... Okay, so your ground forces haven't moved yet. And we do need to block this off. So, I don't know. Shakti could make it. I could split her force or I could, I could move up. We should move up. We've got two fleets. I'll move up... Um, I'll move up the 212th, including their main fleet, with Obi-Wan in charge. Let's get you holding this planet while Shakti moves on. Experience. Yeah, and you're going to just press on. I'm going to leave that Venator in Pathfinder position. It's fine. Um, I wonder if there's an actual Star Wars term for that. I've always called them Pathfinders, um, as that's kind of what they are. They're the first ship to go in. They're the one that goes in and finds out where the rest of the enemy fleet is and then says, okay, you're clear to drop in. Um, but there's probably a name for that. Which, in this case, is a Venator, so might be a little overkill in, in firepower. The enemy doesn't stack the oh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. All right, let's not... You know what? Let's pause. Let's... Let's go... Hmm. We could do a Dreadnought battle group in the back. So here's the Dreadnought battle group. On my way, Commander. One, As you wish, Commander. two, three. Mystery. What is that? There's a Starfighter over there. Four. Oops. So four Dreadnoughts. I'm going to give you immediate orders to close in on the shipyard and destroy it, while the rest of you, um, spearheaded by a Praetor, Loaded. and then... Yes, oh, Venator. Let's get some on its starboard side. So we got a nice battle line. It's a little different in this. Like in in the Galactic Civil War mods, and I, I kind of like this. You know, this game, this mod, is all about battle lines and large numbers of space forces. Oh, you bring in the Jedi. Whereas the Galactic Civil War ones are, are very much more hit and run and worried about supplies and spearheading, you know, attacks into territory where you're trying to dodge the enemy fleets, at least when you're playing as the Rebels. It'll, I wonder how it'll change when we play as the Empire. Um, all right, so we've just about got you down. Let's give the orders to the Dreadnoughts to move in. Your orders are given. The Venator has taken another Ion Cannon Blast. Uh, but overall, I feel pretty good about this. Yeah. Let's move these. Let's move you guys forward. Press. Press. Okay, press this direction. You seem, you seem confused. There we go. There we go. Ah, oh, it's such a good shot. I love the Venator so much. I have learned a little bit of Blender. So if you don't know, I've been running tabletop for Cory, for uh, for Cory loses the mod author of this mod, um, for Eckhart's Ladder, um, and for Charlie over at X2, and for Wasted Space here on the XP Gamers. Um, it is the. What did, I, what did I name that series? It's the Rogues, uh, this the Rebel Squadron series, right? There's two episodes of it so far. There's probably going to be like three or four before that plot is over, and then we decide what we want to do. Um, all right, nice. And it's been going really great. It's kind of a Rogue Squadron-like story. Uh, so they're a squadron of fighters, of fighter pilots, that have been given mysterious orders out to the middle of nowhere. 
and they don't know who they're being attached to, what unit, what their job is going to be, and they're all very different people with very different skill sets, even in different fighters of their choice um, within within re within limits. And I limited them to the choices that were in uh, squadrons because you know it's coming out. I thought it would be pretty fitting, um, and it's been good. Like they're learning. We got some new players. They've never played tabletop before, so yeah. It's been, it's really fun to introduce. I'm gonna bring Yularen's fleet up, I think. We're gonna do a raid. We've got all those Aquitans, Architans, whatever you wanna call them. Um, head cannon, best cannon, and I will hold that till the day I die. Uh, let's see, ground forces. Yeah, no, you don't actually have any. You're pretty limited. Yoda, I thought I sent you Oh, they haven't arrived yet. Yeah, they're still en route. Yeah, they're still en route. We got, you covered. we got another... Got another Pelta built. Bring her around. Wow, we've got a lot of Venators just chilling back here. Raising we don't... Oh, yeah, you're blockading. You're fine. We could go back there and conquer those, but I kind of want to stop the enemy's ability to produce Space Force. So... Let's do our ground invasion of Ithor. Save the Hammerheads. So that campaign's been going pretty well. Um, now that I'm I'm kind of on a break for the long-term campaign. They're they're getting a handle on it. I threw them into the deep end of space combat in the last episode as part of the zip plot. I don't want to give anything too uh, anything away for anybody who's watching that right now. Um, I don't know when we're gonna be able to do our next one. Alright, let's rock and roll. We've got scouts. We'll move the scout walkers forward and then uh, man, I kinda want to go ham with multiple clone platoons drop go. drop drop they might have an assault craft let's go find out I know you guys are scouts go scout for me oh they have no walking sound sadness the reflectivity on their armor seems a bit high makes it hard to see the detail da, 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 da. Moving out. We'll send you some clones as soon as we Let's can. Let's go. Clones on the move. Like we drilled, go. Guns I wish these could cap. Orders. Move in. I really do. Didn't realize how much I would miss that. Because it's like, okay, you can scout, but... Push forward. Move forward. You can't do anything orders. when you get there. <laughs> we have not secured the area. <laughs> Oh, there's Let's even a turbo go. laser. All right, if we can get the clones up here, if Do we can like move quickly enough, we can hold this pretty well. Come on, clones. Let's go. Get through the... What do we have? Incoming assault ship. Like, the worst thing ever. All right, hold position here. Everybody take cover. And we'll get some AA out. See if we can find those rockets. Look at them missing. Like, the accuracy. We got one hit out of, like, 40. No! They blew it up! Damn it. All right, never mind. Never mind. You're just going to be harassed until you get there. Just run. Just run. Yeah, see, they can't capture. But they could. No, I don't think they could even capture that either. I think it's the same the same mechanism. All right, let's get you um, light scouts back here. We're just going to keep running. I'm going to try this again. They'll probably, yeah, immediately blast it. Keep running. Two poor clones. They can't move in fire too, which is quite nice. How we doing? All right, give them a little bit of covering fire. Once they arrive, we'll capture the drop zone and the defenses. Um, oh, don't let them! Don't let them take that. Stay together. Stay together. You know, for standard clones, I wouldn't even be against them being slower, but have tons of health if they can, like, dig in. So, you know, they have that ability in, uh, in Awakening of the Rebellion where if you hit it on some units, they'll actually build sandbags. If you have the ability to let your clones dig into a territory, kind of turn it into a bit of more of a trench fight, um, I think that'd be kind of cool. Let's bring in a lat. It's the best thing we've got that's anti-air. Weird. Weirdly, that's kind of what I use them for. Not really transports, just shooting it air units um aa is actually gonna be done soon that might actually get finished that doesn't matter our lats are up watch the lat just wreck him now see the firepower is not bad these are getting rebalanced Corey mentioned it 
on one of his streams. Me and him were kind of BSing for a bit. Let's get everyone. Obi, Obi. I need you, Obi, Obi. Come join us. Did they rebalance you? No, there's still that weird, that weird delay, and you're still super slow. So, I think we're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna bring in like all lats. I wish you guys were faster. If you were maneuverable and faster, maybe in the next next time we play this campaign, um, we will switch them out. But we'll actually use them to transport ground troops. Let's go. Obi, go for it. I think we've got enough firepower now, because the one thing these lads do have going for them is just stupid amounts of pew-pew. So let's go break a couple of enemy... If we have a big... Yeah, look at this. I ordered them to attack. They can't even get to firing range. At a reasonable... Look at a reasonable time frame. Finally decided to come out of hiding, let's go. Have you? We're just going to go in. We might be able to break all the way through their base. Might just give them attack move orders all the way to the capture You're site. Just another droid destined for the scrap pile. What's this? Scouts are moving forward. Something just died. This is the attack move order, by the way. By themselves, I, I ordered just the lats. The dark side is a path to Ah, maybe I didn't click it. Benefit of the doubt here. Maybe I didn't click hard enough. I'll do it with more, <laughs> more feeling. Because <laughs> how great would it be to load up all of the 212 attack battalion in fast moving lats, bring them in, gunships firing, lasers going off, rockets dropping, and then land them individually, you know, as a, as a group of like one, two, three, four, and so I can do it fast. All right, let's use hopefully overwhelming firepower. Engage that building. Take that tower out. At the same time, give me a... I can't see their base. Give me an orbital strike right there. Oh, it's a capture. It's capture to win kind of mission. Okay, there's the buildings. Okay, we're good. We're good. Clones, you're still moving out, right? Yeah, they're just... They're just moving. Moving slow. But the idea that, like, you've got a front line that's always moving, uh, or maybe not always moving, but you've got a front line that's kind of slow moving, but high health would be kind of cool. So you deploy that sandbag or trench effect, and then suddenly the clones get, you know, a decent amount of, of, of health. You get those kind of line battles going. You want to back them up with artillery. Oh, man. Okay. They have a lot of doom. Let's go ahead and drop a bombing run. And the rest of the clones have arrived. Let's lock it down. Poor lats are getting blasted. I really need a bombing run right there, but let's go ahead and fall back with these lats. Infantry hold. Everybody dig in. Scouts hold. They've got far more units than I thought. We do have a bombing run. Angle's kind of questionable. Might get the super battle droids in it. Yeah, I got the super battle. Ooh, and I got two buildings. Two buildings. Not bad. Not bad. They have a drop zone right there. All right, where are those lads? All right, come on back. I'm going to need you. It's up to you clones. You have to hold. Can you get some firepower over here? And let's get three or four brave squads to move forward. Um, because if we can capture that front line, we'll be looking pretty good. Let's get that back line up here. Lats, give me a gun run right here. Nice, 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 nice. This year has been one of the best Star Wars years yet for gaming. I'll say it, and I mean it too, because I was thinking about it. I was just thinking about the footage that I've got of me in a lat in squad, in a mod for squad. And a pilot picked me, was like, you need a ride? I was like, yeah, man, sure. I jump into it. This mod is amazing. I did a video on it a while back. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you check it out. Um, but basically, we're flying over what looks like maybe Moss Eisley. And it's during the Clone Wars, obviously, because I'm in this lat. Um, and we're flying over. You can see a battle going on on the far side of it. And he's like, I'm not going to bring you too close. I'm going to drop you in and drop you down um, in the city itself. Because they've got AA. And it's the other team. 
And it's just such an amazing moment. And, it's, and he comes in, and we're starting to take fire. And he drops me off to join up with my squad. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like half a mile away from my squad still in this massive city. It feels like, at least. And as he's taken off, I see an incoming assault ship from the Separatists. And he, the poor guy, is just like, taking fire, taking fire. And he's gone. <gasps> we lost Obi-Wan. No. Uh, I was talking too much. Stop paying attention. But we're at the end of the campaign anyway, so I'm not super worried. Poor Obi. Obi's retired. He took a little bit of a wound. He's fine. Order, He's fine. <clears throat> yeah, if you're not going to micro your Jedi, don't bring them in. That's probably the the key there. Uh, you know, in a rage, the ground forces... Where's Anakin right now? You guys are ready. Let's do Corson. Let's do this evasion. I don't want to have to back cap these, so let's do them now. Um, I think we're going to go this, bring this all the way to a win, a win screen. So in the next campaign, I'm going to bring back the storyline stuff. I think we're going to do those intros. I miss them. Uh, and I've got some ideas. I've got some fun ideas. So, okay, let's get you guys together. One, two, Where are we going to go? Bridges? Is that, a, is that a bridge? No, it's a refinement or water plant. All right, going to move this squad out. See if he makes it. At the same time, I'm going to bring in... No, I'm going to bring in an A6. Because unlike the Lats, the A6 could actually survive. Like, flanked by... That, let's bring in Anakin. And then we'll bring in a full platoon of phase twos. Yeah, that feels good. We're going to load up. It's not an A6, it's an A5. We'll still load it up. Unlike the Lat, this has got the health. And most of the time, you just expect it to be slow. So it's fine. It's not a big deal. You're a little smarter than the others, aren't you? Depends who the others are. Objective looks protected. <laughs> All right, clones, how you doing? You've already run into some resistance. Let's fall back a bit. You can take out the... Oh, they're, they're commando droids. You might not actually be able to take those out. Go ahead and dig in. Focus your fire. Gonna bring you an AA turret. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Squad, load it up. We're leaving. And they're all 5 0 first because we got Anakin in the field. Nice. Well, Anakin, you're going to be group Kenobi one. After he got pasted in uh, the and last sure mission, you're yeah, around. you're going to show him how it's done. What do we have down here? Ooh, satellite tower, you say. Don't mind if I do. We shouldn't stick around here, though. We need to move, so we're going to move south. Anakin, hook up with these clones here and hang out, and then we'll bring the rest of the clones down to this capture point in the south. And give me one squad. Pulling one squad from that unit. Take out a cover. Whoa! Okay, they're going to need some backup. Let's move those lats in firing range. Focus. Run. Run, 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 run. Ah, damn. There's too many of them. That's why we send Anakin in. Hold them back. Are they trying to... Move in, move in, move in. He just immediately destroys one. What else do you have? You've got force push. That's not going to work unless it's against... It's taking a lot of fire. All right, fall back, Anakin. Wow. Wow. They've got a lot of armor back there. Back up, we'll, backups on the way. Backups on the way. How'd you do, Anakin? He had to fall back. He'll be okay. Oh, those poor clones. Oh, what I would give for a bombing run right now. It wouldn't be the highest credit value bombing run we've ever done, but it would be pretty amazing. All right, clones drop. We need to hold for a little bit longer. Hold for the bombing run. Survive for the bombing run. I'm going to move you back. How did you not grab this? Grab this. That's our reinforcement point. All right, A6 is falling back. It's available. Drop, drop, drop. You clones died heroes because we're about to get... Where is it? If I can grab it. Um, Ankle looks good. Look at that firefight in the distance. All right, and drop. Drop, drop, drop. Nice. Good timing. They grabbed the entire thing. <laughs> oh, they have another squad. Oh, crap, baskets. We've got, like, three clones still alive back here. I think it's time to drop in the reinforcements. And by that, I mean 
three groups of artillery. Let's do two pieces of heavy armor. And two groups of bronze. And we are going to just artillery the survivors. Droids online. Where are they heading? They might be heading south. Yeah, they're heading south. Not great. Killing my AA. These damn B1s. How we doing? All right. Rounds are out. We're starting to thin the crowd. What's over here in the corner? Mining facility and a mining facility. Not too worried about that. This is the group we actually need to push for. All right, Anakin, dig in back here. You're on, you're on your own. Artillery! Hey! Why is there only one? Let's get the main turret of this heavy armor runabout. Arcs. Let's go around. We're gonna get super sneaky. Is there no way across? See, now here's a map that screams. Oh, here they come, actually. Never mind. We're gonna hold position here. Go grab that. Incoming! And we need that other artillery right now. One unit's not cutting it. We're not thinning the crowd fast enough. I'm gonna give you a repair facility. Because you're about to be pretty uh, overrun at this point. Yeah, you're taking hits. Let's get those ARC troopers forward and get them in cover. Blast it, blast it. All right. I was talking with Tabby this morning over coffee about ways to make the um, tabletop FFG system a little bit feel a little bit more tactical and also make the combat move a little faster, which is a little counterintuitive. But something we yeah we're gonna we're gonna press up arcs. Um, you guys are gone too far. Let them come to you. You have the advantage. And now that we've got an opening, and because we have that. Uh, sensor array we can actually see this there goes their hq that's going to lower the number they're bringing in all right now that we have successfully blown up all of their things let's move forward actually i can keep you all in cover can't i yeah i can uh you stay put you move forward i want you all to get into one formation take out the remaining are these commandos? No, they're B2s. And then as soon as you're formed up, I'm going to give you the attack move order. And our arcs are moving forward. Cool. Yeah, making it a little bit more tactical. And because we're playing a little D&D, &D, and there's parts of it that I absolutely love. And I know my players like it, too. The sense that, you know, their, their choices matter in combat, that cover matters, that flanking matters, that keeping us, you know, people moving matters. Um... So we might be doing some tweaks. If we end up doing a long-term campaign on YouTube, and that's what we're kind of discussing. I know Wasted's talked about it a little bit. Um, I think he'd be very down. And I don't want to give up my main my main group of players right now, you know, because I've got players I've been playing for years with. So I don't know who, who the player is going to be, or maybe we'll do like a rotation thing. But uh, we, we're definitely working out some like home rolled home ruled mechanics to make the combat feel a little bit more like they can if they play smart they can really make a difference if that makes any sense from this narrative game we already play on a table um at, like it's a strategy game right a little bit more classic D, &D style with ranges and all that there's a lot of arcs I wonder what their thinking was when, what Corey was thinking when he was like, I'm going to make an ARC squad. And when you deploy ARCs, they deploy in these, they basically deploy in a standard platoon size. <laughs> like this is two, this is two groups. So this is more than normal, but still even half this is what? Fall in over here. Form up. Yeah. And yeah, this is, this is like a full squad. Easily. And this is a full platoon. Excuse me. Multiple squads. This is like three squads right here. If you add a few more to it. All right. We need to press on. We got a bombing run. Uh, they're going to come from the far corner. So 
Yeah. Gold squadron, commencing Gold squadron hit that, and then the rest of us, let's move out, and we'll take out the barracks. I think we can do that that much of an issue. Yeah, I can get some repairs, too. Our poor target locked. juggernaut. We're going to get these when we play as the Empire. Oh, man, the Imperial version of these. Or variant, because I know there's some silly number of variants. Bombs! Howay! Nice. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. There we go. One of my players in the long-running game played as a tactician character, and they had gotten so far to a point in the story so far where they were just starting to get into the mass combat rule set and the story kind of got diverted so we haven't been able to really explore it as much as i wanted to uh, but basically there's a rule set to allow for mass battles and so even the gm and the players don't know where these battles are going to go but the players can can tweak the dice pool and of uh, based on how like strong the enemy force is what kind of advantages do their forces have versus the enemies so you can have some pretty big battles represented um in the game in the game and as a tactician you can imagine that character coming up with strategies figuring out you know where units under their command should be positioned uh where the best defensive position is where to set up artillery what assets should they have in command and what should they have ready and where should they station them um is all a thing that you can have in a tabletop game and you can do whatever you want you know it's 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 limited only by your imagination and what you're willing to run or your gm's willing to run all right take them down i got a little taste of that fighting over a mining installation that they had uh, picked up a distress call for and that ended up turning into this big fight with slavers in a, in a drop ship, a golden drop ship slowly dropping down. And they fought for the first time this uh, this freighter. And I can't remember the name of it. It's got a very boxy look to it. But it basically has these, um, it has a special ability. If it, if it's obviously if it's crewed and flying, if it's firing at ground troops, it has turrets in the back that can reach out and grab people and just steal them and fly away with them. <laughs> Because it's got, because it's, it's a slaver's ship. It's really messed up, but, hmm. So they would have had to have dealt with that. Um, and sadly, the players came up with such a great, I mean, not sadly, they came up with such a great solution. They set up some explosives on some of the, um, the mining installation's fuel depot. And as the ship came down, they detonated the explosives, blowing up the fuel, uh, storage facility, taking out one of the ships. And the other one had to flee because it was like charred. Uh, but I never got to use the ability I, on the players. I used it on some of the people they were defending. Uh, and that kind of gave them a clue of like, hey, this is a thing these ships can do. Uh, and then they, yeah, their plan, of course, worked out quite well. Their explosives experts set the charges. Their leadership character, you know, guided the action. And they managed to deal with the threat through some creative thinking. But All right. We have taken another world. Um, man, I'm sad now. 212 is gone because I lost Obi-Wan because I was yapping and I wasn't microwing my Jedi. I wasn't paying attention. And now he's in the back to tank somewhere. Uh, yeah. I think we're going to press. Press with one of the fleets. Let's take... Let's take the Yalaran fleet forward. And see what we can do with our little wolf pack of Arquintons and Ord Tarassi. For some reason, because this has the largest base station, actually, uh, I think this is going to be a proper fight. So this might be just a hit and run. The fleet is on the move. And... Okay... Not a lot in orbit, and it was a ground unit that it showed. Oh, there is a capital shipyard. All right. That's got to go. It has to go quickly. Let's pause. Reinforcements. Fastest route to it would be through here. Through the asteroid belt in the south. All right. So we'll bring in a heavy firepower and a little bit of a fleet to back him up, as well as Yularen. Convince flanking maneuver. You know, that's exactly what we're going to do. Arquintons responding. Arquintons responding. Republic light cruiser responding. Understood, we're moving out. 
Who needs fixing? Whoops. Copy that, sir. All right, I guess X going in with us. <laughs> I brought in a Pelta. Yes, sir. Uh, I actually don't know if the Pelta is slower or faster. It should probably be slower unless it's like the Rebel modified variant. I would, I would think. Our Quintin's here. Our Quintin's All right, there's the order. Quintin. Just giving them the order to attack. Uh, no, actually, don't don't attack. Drive by. Go right by. The rest of you. Destroyer holding. Let's run this gauntlet. Move in. Move in. Hold up. I'm excited. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to play squadrons. Uh, what? No! You can't retreat! The intergalactic banking clan is in full retreat. But I'm not ready for you to retreat. I had a plan. Wait, I don't have you can't retreat. Pause. Where's that? Service. Interdiction field on one. Get wrecked! Haha, -ha, there is no retreat. In this Clone Wars mod, I have interdictors. So while the main fleet moves in and engages the recusant over there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're onto our game. That frigate's turned. We might be small. Those three Hope frigates are turning. Range. We're almost in firing range. Engines on. Move on your own. Leave the Pelta behind. I'm sure Echo will be fine. It's a Pelta. Nobody shoots at a Pelta. Nobody even notices it. <laughs> this is fine. Uh, all right. Focus your fire. Just take it down. And the rest of the fleets arrive. Let's break off the fighters. Begin your attack run. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and engage. All batteries fire. The Venator. The single best ship for the Rebellion. They might not have had many of them, but I can I guarantee they should have had at least one. Because out of all the ships in Star Wars, this is the biggest threat. Uh, biggest threat. This is the biggest advantage of the Venator, and I think it should be its claim to fame. No ship can launch fighters faster of the ship class, mind you than the Venator. Because who has more hangar doors than a Venator? Its entire front end is nothing but a hangar. Meaning it is the collecting a large fighter force and launching a large fighter force, nothing would compare in speed to a Venator and a fighter wing based out of one, right? There can't be. Because the whole front end is a gigantic hangar bay and every one of them can just come out and shoot straight up if they want to. Even a Star Destroyer, they have to drop from a single location or two locations, depending on which Star Destroyer you're looking at. Not good. Not good. So they're all chained in there waiting. All right, everybody. I'm going to wrap up this recording here. And it has nothing to do with the fact that Squadrons is out. And I really want to play. Um, yeah. So I'll be over on Twitch slash Captain Check. If you guys want to join me, feel free to pop in, say howdy. Ask questions if you like. I'm sure I'll be talking about the game. Um, I might be recording the campaign and i might bring that over here to youtube so let me know if you're interested in that uh and if i'm doing that then i might not answer everything that comes into chat so we'll see y'all have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you next time later everybody sudden music is intense